Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. On this episode, top speaker and best-selling author of 23 books, John Gordon. And now, Rich Redman. What is up in podcast land? Yep, it's that time. Another exciting episode of the Rich Redmond Show where we talk about all things music, motivation, and success. And usually I'm joined by my co-host, my cohort, my sidekick, my longtime friend, Jim McCarthy, jimmccarthyvoiceovers.com. But today's guest is so busy. I was just so excited to get 20 minutes of his time to pick his brain. And today, I mean, I am so excited, podcasters, because uh, today's guest is a internationally acclaimed speaker and author specializing in the topics of leadership, culture, sales, and teamwork. He's worked with everyone, big sports teams like the Pittsburgh Pirates, the Los Angeles Dodgers, the San Diego Padres, Fortune 500 companies like Campbell Soup, Wells Fargo, my favorite, Southwest Airlines. I'm a Southwest Airlines man and so prolific as an author. I'm so excited to get into this conversation today with my new friend, John Gordon. How are you, man? I'm doing great, Rich. Great, great to see you and I really appreciate you having me on here. Oh man, thank you so much for, for and so I, am I right in saying you're, you split your time between the East and West Coast? You might be, are you in Florida right now? Is that right? Am I? In Florida now, we live yeah. in Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida near Jacksonville. And then we have a place in Santa Monica. So we go out there, you know, every, every couple of months, we'll spend yeah. a couple of weeks there. And with the lockdowns though, we're more in Florida right now. Yeah. You know, I was in Florida for the holidays. My folks are in Port Charlotte and, uh, just yeah, it was you know it's 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 its own place, man. It's really really special. I mean, I know why everyone retires there. It's <laughs> just that vitamin D every day. It is well, you know, great sunlight in in LA too. But right now, you're able to go outside. You're able to go eat at restaurants. You're able to to live a little bit more freely right now. Right. Of course, everyone's still wearing a mask inside and things like that. But for some reason, Florida is just approaching things a, a little differently. And and honestly, I've been around a lot of people here, and and people seem to be happy. They're healthy. Uh, no one's getting really sick. So it's it's been uh, it's been nice to be here. Yeah, you have your suntan lines there on your on your face from your from your shades, man. Yeah, I walk every I walk every day in the morning. So I take a, a thank you walk in the morning. I walk, I practice gratitude. That's great. And say what I'm thankful for. That gives you a double dose of positive energy, right? You flood your brain and body with these positive emotions that uplift you yes. rather than the stress hormones that slowly drain you. And so doing that every day gives me a great boost in the morning. Well, this is, I, I have a similar ritual. I do my gratitude list in the shower. I don't know. There's something very meditative about the water dripping on you. And there's this little bit of a, you're alone and you can really kind of uh, commune and say what you're thankful for. And when, you, when I do the gratitude list every day, it just gets that, that day off to an amazing start. A thank you shower. I like that. That's a thank you shower. I mean, and it's like they say that you're supposed to take cold showers. It's really good for so many parts of your your immune system and all that. I'm like, I'm a hot shower guy, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I have here on the wiki, and I don't know if this is correct, but you studied human ecology at Cornell. I mean, you, these are some uh, great institutions, Cornell and Emory. So Cornell University, I have a I have a degree in policy analysis government economics as part of the human ecology school at Cornell. So Cornell had a number of different schools that you applied to. It was the state funded part of Cornell. So my tuition was cheaper and I didn't have a lot of money. My parents were not wealthy. So the lacrosse coach was able to get me into the school of human ecology, which made the tuition a lot cheaper because I had a scholarship offer from another college for football. So Went to Cornell, played lacrosse there, had a great experience. I really majored in lacrosse, I I like to say, you know, being at Cornell. But incredible experience. And then I went to Emory and got my master's in teaching. And I I taught school for a year. Nice. And then after that, I went on to to go into the uh, bar business. I always, when I speak to educators, I say, you know, I taught for a year and then I opened up a bar. And they always (laughs) laugh at that because I'm like, 
teaching drove me to the bar business. But and it, uh, that, well, that's funny. That, I mean, that is funny because because well, we have a similar background. I have my master's in teaching and education. And when I moved to Nashville, I was a K through three substitute teacher. And so I would play in the clubs until three in the morning. And then at seven, I had a pair of chinos on in my briefcase and I was teaching kindergartners. And, you know, I learned a lot about myself. It, it, was, a, it was a cool day job. You know, I didn't have to be swinging a hammer out in the hot sun. Um, but it was one more step towards my ultimate uh, purpose, which is, you know, to affect people in a positive positive way and change lives through music. And I know that you do that on a, on a daily basis. So, so you have your masters, you experiment with the bar business. When does the, the, the whole, the motivation, law of attraction, positivity, speaking, authoring game happen? What was the moment? There was there a light bulb. Were you always a fan of the Zig Ziglar's and the Napoleon Hills? Like, how did it start? I was inspired by writers like that. Ken Blanchard inspired me. Mm -hmm. Og Mandino and The Greatest Salesman did. My mom gave me that book when yeah. I graduated college. And so I was always inspired by people like that. So what happened was I went to go work for a dot-com. 80,000 shares, thought I was going to make my gazillions. Right. Things were looking great. And then the dot-com bubble crashed. And so when it crashed, I was like, okay. What am I going to do? We had just moved to Jacksonville because my wife wanted to live near the water. So sure. the place was based out of Atlanta, our headquarters, but they allowed me to go live in Jacksonville, live and work from home. So I was doing that, working for dot com. I had sold my restaurants. I had gotten in, involved in a bar and in some restaurants in Atlanta, sold those back to my partners and then moved down to Jacksonville. So now I have this job, have some of the money from when I sold the restaurants and the dot com crashed. Scary time. How many pay the bills? We just got a nice house, a mortgage, two small children, and my life is falling apart. Right. And my wife had had enough of my negativity. I had become really negative. And she said, I love you, but I'm not going to spend my life with someone who makes me so miserable. You need to change. And I had to wow. change. I really yeah. did. I had gotten very negative and I was not a good person to be around. And so right then and there, I said, okay, what am I born to do? Like, why am I here? What is my purpose? It was a very prayerful moment on my knees, like weeping, like help me. My Jerry Maguire moment, you know, yeah. help me God, help me help you. And writing and speaking came to me in that moment. And I realized I wanted to inspire people the way I was inspired in the past. For some reason, I thought I'm going to do this. I didn't know I would write fables. I didn't know I would write 23 books. I didn't know that I would you know, go on to speak all that I've done and all the work I've done, all the organizations I've worked with. Yes. But that's what I knew in that moment. I'm going to go do this. And I literally just said, I'm going to start. And that's what I did. I literally started a newsletter. We had five subscribers, my mother, my brother, my best friend from college. And I started this weekly positive tip that I would send out. And gradually that list grew and grew as more and more people started to read and share it. This was way back before blogs, right? Was this, this like was, 1999? This was 2002. 2002. Okay. 2002. So, so it's been 18 like, years of starting it from starting a blog, a pre-blog, a newsletter, yep. sending out helpful tips to people. And, and, I, and I, I've got to congratulate you, man. It's, it's just the power of what you can accomplish with a vision and a focus and determination, a laser focus and not stopping. I mean, 18 years is a long time, but when you think about what you've accomplished, if everyone check out johngordon.com, I went and checked it out. It is the most concise, well-planned out, methodically put together website. And it's like, and it's, I love the fact that for the fellow speakers or creatives that are listening out there, if you want to hire John, it's like so easy. It's like, Download the brochure, call this number, download this. Here's pictures of John. Here's all the testimonials. Oh, you want videos? It's like, it's fantastic, man. Congratulations. I appreciate it, Rich. That, that means a lot. We're actually going to do a, a new website coming up. So I'll oh, really? really incorporate the same, the same uh, efficiency with that, right? And effectiveness. Yeah. But yeah, it's something that uh, we want to we wanna do. But yeah, I think we try to make it simple. I have a podcast now, Positive University, yes. which I had you on. I was, Thank you so I was, much. Uh, and I love the fact that you had me right after McConaughey. It was like really big bragging. I was like, hey, man, this is a cool podcast. I'm right. I'm on after McConaughey. Exactly. Well, you know, we, we needed two good looking guys in a row, you know, so, we, we, uh, you know, we wanted to go, we, we had to go one step up after him, right? You can't oh go down. God. We had to go up. So we, we brought oh, you on Thank and you. Uh, we do that. And I do a lot of leadership training. We do a ton of leadership training and we have a, a lot of consultants and trainers now that work with me to do this yeah. work. And so 
I'm really focused a lot on the area of positive leadership yes. and how do we develop great leaders who then could build strong teams. You know, I work with the Rams and the Dodgers and the Miami Heat, work with the Seattle Seahawks this year, got a chance to speak to them, the Tampa Bay Lightning. So I get to work with all these incredible sports teams, learn from all these great leaders. Yes. But then I also, you know, get to work with a lot of companies and school districts. So I love education. So you and I being former teachers, I get to go back into these schools where I started and then make an impact at the cultural level, the leadership level to make these schools better, more positive so that they can better lead these kids and help these kids become all that they're meant to be. I love that. And, you know, I, and, and my approach has been like, I'm the power hour guy. I come in and I hopefully can affect change and inspire people in that one hour. Um, but to, it's very exciting. And it, it, I'm very curious about if you go to speak that first time for say the Rams, and then you have to go back time and time again, uh, what your systems and processes are, your methodologies to keep and insp keep inspiring those people and giving them new stuff. That's very impressive. Well, for me and the Rams or some of the other teams, it is just a talk like you do. So you go in and you inspire and you encourage, but then you have the power of positive leadership or the power of a positive team. These books I wrote about what makes a great team great, what makes a great leader great, and also the energy bust in these other books, which then the coaches have the players read. Gotcha. And when they're reading a book, as you know, they start to embody the principles. They start to live them. And that's where you see change. With a talk, you can inspire, you can encourage, you can create a shift. And some people do shift from just a talk. But as you know, a lot of people, it's the habits that need to change. It's the implementation that needs to happen. So that's where I've moved my work in, in, the other, in, in that direction where I'm still the guy to come in and speak. But now I have a team that goes in and does workshops after. They go do follow-up training after. Ah. Where we can actually create you know, more change within the organization and within teams. But for me, yeah, I just love to go in like you, do my talk. And <laughs> then the books are great reinforcements. We all have to also have videos that they use. But I find, you know, if the coach really embodies these principles, then the coach is able to implement them and bring them to light and reinforce them. If a coach is reinforcing them, you see a successful season. If the coach doesn't, it doesn't happen. So it always comes down to the leader. Is it the starts at the top. Driving the bus? Is, the, is the leader, if the leader's not driving the bus, the bus doesn't move. The Rich Redmond Show will be right back. Those who are self-employed, especially musicians, think homeownership is unattainable. For Bruce Klein, it took seven years to purchase his first home as a self-employed working musician. But once he did, man, was it satisfying. So he decided he wanted to help other musicians and creatives gain that same satisfaction. Bruce earned his lending license and is now helping people avoid the mistakes he made on his seven-year journey. If you're a self-employed musician, he can help. Go to musiciansmortgage.com, powered by Movement Mortgage. Bruce Klein, NMLS, number 1465948. Movement Mortgage supports equal housing opportunity. NMLS, number 39179. NMLSconsumeraccess.org. Henry Ford once said that if you need a machine and don't buy it, then you will ultimately find that you have paid for it and don't have it. Nothing could be truer about energy-efficient LED lighting in your business. At Big Dot Lighting, we can show you how a portion of your savings from a commercial LED lighting upgrade will be paid for in hardly any time at all. Until then, you're paying for them anyway. Book a no-cost lighting energy assessment with Big Dot Lighting. At least 30% of your utility bill is waiting to be saved. Go to BigDotLighting.com. Are you a drummer looking to expand your drumming vocabulary or take your career to the next level? You can connect with me for one-on-one -on -one virtual lessons and consultations that are now 30% off. I cover topics like styles, reading music, the Nashville number system, charting, music business 101, and career guidance. Simply send me an email at booking at richredmond.com to schedule. And for more information on all of my products and services, visit richredmond.com. This is the Rich Redman Show. A lot of your, your, your talks and your books deal with the ideas of living your life with a vision, with drive, with focus, with purpose, and approaching your life with joy, happiness, enthusiasm, gratitude, passion, and excitement. So I downloaded the Energy Bus. I love that you can get your books in all forms. Have you, have you done the Audible books where you read them or somebody? Yeah, yeah they're all on Audible. I've read every one except The Seed. Yeah. And that was like my fifth or sixth book. And then I got some complaints that I didn't read them and didn't read that one. So I had to start reading everyone after that. And the funny thing is, you know, I don't really love my voice, but for some reason, you know, people want the author to read the book. So yeah, it becomes more authentic. So yeah. So, so I've read all the books and 
I don't know about you, but I know you've written a book and the audio part of it is not my favorite part to actually have to go in and read the book. It takes about eight, nine hours to actually produce an audio book. And you're in that studio a long time yeah. reading but, it. But yeah, I've done, done audio for all of them. And uh, a lot of people, I think more and more are doing the audio versions of the books I'm finding out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing because people are multitasking these days and they're on the way. Well, they used to be on the way to the gym and, play, and you could kind of learn and grow. I love podcasts. I love continuing education. But you know what I love about these books is the, the energy buses. You, a lot of these books are highly motivational. There's positive educational takeaways that you can apply to your life, but they're almost like, it's like Aesop's fable. It's, it's, in, a, it's in a fictionalized form, which is very brave and is very inspiring for me because I've read so much fiction as a young man. I was into dragons and, you know, monsters and sci-fi. And then when I got into personal development, I started going all nonfiction. But I love that angle. And so what I learned from the energy bus, and this is one of the subjects of your talks and the speakers that you have that you will send out, uh, that they can speak about the concepts in the energy bus. And you have 10 rules. And these are some of them. You're the driver of your bus. Uh, desire, vision, focus, move your bus, fueling the ride with positive energy, inviting people on the bus to share your vision. And, and the list goes on and on. It was just such an easy read. I really enjoyed it. And, and was that early on for you, the energy bus? What was the first book? Energy bus was my first book. Okay. Took yeah. five years to be the bestseller. It was rejected by over 30 publishers. Wow. And now to this day, it's my most popular book. Hit the Wall Street Journal bestseller list literally like two weeks ago, three weeks ago. And we're talking 14 years later now. So pretty wild that, you know, a book like that would be that old and yet still be relevant to this day. But my favorite part is where you have to feed the positive, you got to fuel the ride with positive energy because if you don't have it, you can't share it. So every day the concept is you got to feed yourself with positivity so that we can feed others. And the more you do that, the positivity will grow. And so we have so much negativity right now. We have so much adversity. So how do we overcome all the negativity, all the challenges out there? And this is not about like Pollyanna positive. This is not about seeing the world through rose-colored glasses. This is knowing that you have the power to overcome the thorns. It's not about ignoring reality. This is not about toxic positivity where you ignore it. No, you see the adversity, you see the challenge, but you maintain optimism, faith and belief to create a better reality in the future. And I, to me, that's what the energy bus is all about, giving hope and purpose and vision. But ultimately, it's about this guy who was miserable and negative based on me from years ago and how he had to overcome and become more positive to get his team on the bus and moving in the right direction with a shared vision, focus and purpose. So how does he lead his team with optimism and belief? And it's so funny because that book, you know, is really the basis for my work with the power of positive leadership and the power of a positive team. I took the, the general principles and then started to provide a lot of applications on, okay, how do we really lead? What does it look like to create the vision and to ignite your team towards that vision? Yes, man. And I love that the bus driver's name was Joy. And she was almost, she reminds me of like Clarence in A Wonderful Life. She was like a, an angel on earth. You know, people will say that often. Yeah, she... Um, full of energy, full of life, but, but very real, but just yeah. someone, because actually she's the mother of Martin in my book, Training Camp. So all my fables are connected ah. through a character in each book connects to another character in another book. People don't know that, but all my fables, I, for some reason, decided to start doing that. And it's a lot of fun. So Martin in Training Camp, which is my favorite book I've written. It's about an undrafted rookie trying to make in the NFL. He gets injured. And then a special coach, Coach Ken, takes him under his wing and starts teaching him the winning habits that separate the best from the rest. And it's about the same characteristics that a musician has, a football player, a doctor, an educator, a nurse, an engineer. The best of the best all have these same and similar characteristics that help them rise to the top of their profession. So I share those characteristics as Coach Ken teaches them to Martin to help him be his best. And he also has to overcome fear along the way, we all have to overcome fear. It's the battle sure. we all face with faith to ultimately create the future and the life that we want to live. And so that's my favorite book I've written. And so Joy is Martin's mom from training camp. It's pretty fun how- Oh fun my God, it's like that. the Chronicles of Narnia. Like it's, it's, it's all interconnected or something. That's awesome. I'll have to, well, I, you know, now I'm hooked. I've read the one book and I've got 22 to go. And even on Amazon, <laughs> you can get the John Gordon collection. I like that. Um, I like that very much, man. But no, I learned a lot from it. I'm super inspired. So um, if you had to give some positive 
nuggets, maybe say five nuggets that someone who's looking to start a business or make changes in their life or become more positive, what are five like global takeaways that someone can use no matter what their age or career path? Global takeaways. That could take a while, but I'll give you a couple of quick ones. <laughs> Best advice I ever heard, Dr. James Gills, only person on the planet to complete six double Ironman triathlons. That's wow. a double Ironman, which means you do an Ironman, a day later you do another one. And the last time he did it, he was 59 years old. He was asked how he did it. He said, I've learned to talk to myself instead of listen to myself. So talk to yourself instead of listen. He said, if I listen, I hear all the fear all the negativity and all the doubt. But if I talk to myself, I get to feed myself with the words and the encouragement that I need to keep on moving forward. Yeah. So what we're talking about here is talking to yourself with words of encouragement. Don't listen to the negative voices. That would be one tip. The other tip from the energy bus, no energy vampires allowed. Gandhi said, I will not let anyone walk through my mind with their dirty feet. So I think that's another key tip because we're always dealing with energy vampires. Negative, negative Nellies. Exactly. Another key don't be negative about negativity. Sometimes we see someone being negative and we become negative in response to that. <sighs> We're leading someone who's negative. And as a leader, we wind up getting negative and dealing with the person who has negativity. So we're actually contributing to the problem, not helping it. We have to rise above it and call that person up to our level instead of coming down to their level. So that's another key. Another big part of my work is about relationships and building winning teams. So to build a great Team, you have to have great relationships. And how do you do that? Four simple C's. Communicate, connect, commit, and care. Nice. Communication, you begin the process of building trust. Connection, you really get to know each other. You develop a bond. Commitment, you serve and sacrifice for that person. They know you're committed to them. Guess what? You get commitment back. We before me. You don't have to be great to serve, but you have to serve to be great. And then finally, care, right? That's the key to being great at anything you do. You care more. If you're a musician, you care about your work. You can see sure. who cares when they're playing. I know you do. I know you care. I know you can see it in others, right? You look at somebody like, all right, that guy cares. That person wants to be a, a craftsman. Yes. That person's not just show up to be a carpenter. They're a craftsman. They're here to create a masterpiece. And there's a difference in how they approach their work. And what is it? They care more. So to me, that's another key principle. And then Finally, I would say we don't create our world from the outside in. We create it from the inside out. So grit is all driven by being inside out. Positive leadership, inside out. Knowing that who you are on the inside ultimately determines and creates what you experience on the outside. And so the more you lead that way from the inside out, circumstances do not define you. You define your circumstances. When put into a boiling hot water, a pot of boiling hot water, the carrot gets weakened and egg gets hardened but the coffee bean transforms the water. You want to be a coffee bean. You don't want to be the egg and get bitter and angry. You don't want to be the carrot and get soft and weakened by what's going on. You want to be the coffee bean, which transforms the water into coffee. Instead of being impacted by its environment, it transforms its environment. And that's one of my main principles. I wrote a book, The Coffee Bean, with a guy named Damon West. Yes. It's a big part of our leadership model as well, to lead from the inside out. I love that. Those are five massive global takeaways that anyone from any walk of life can apply to their life and just see better results. And I love the coffee thing. I see you speaking at some massive culinary institutes. Uh, <laughs> that's the next thing. <laughs> I always get asked, hey, do you, do, you, do you drink coffee? Actually, I don't even drink coffee. Wrote the no, coffee come on. I don't, I don't drink coffee. Have you ever tried it? Oh yeah, I've tried it. I'm just not a coffee drinker. I, yeah. I find my energy elsewhere. You know, I take that walk in the morning. I get energized. I've never drank coffee. I do drink, you know, maybe uh, I'll do a turmeric and ginger tea, which is anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory. Sure. I'll do that, but but not, not really big on coffee for some reason. My wife though, every morning, she has to have her coffee. I love to have that ritual in my life of the smell and you hear it percolating and then it's done and you're excited <laughs> and it's that you get to do that thing every day. Oh, it's, it's just very ritualistic, you know? It must be because, yeah, co coffee drinkers are, are, are really set on their ritual and their pattern and their love of coffee. So yeah, I don't want to disappoint anyone that I don't like coffee. I think coffee drinkers are awesome. I just, for some reason, it's never been a part of my routine. Yeah, man. Well, I can relate to all this, man. You know, as a drummer, I, you know, I've tried, tried time and time again, you could totally uh, experience this experiment, which is enthusiasm is contagious. So if I go out there and I got a smile on my face and I'm sweating and I'm giving 150%, even if my band is having a bad day or the, the singer doesn't want to sing, if I'm driving the bus, they're going to come back and fuel up and get that energy that they need. And, and you could just 
have an amazing show. If, if I'm in the driver's seat, positively leading, man. So I could totally relate to all this. John, get, I, I love this, get, man. I, Rich, I got to ask you, do you get more yeah. tired? Do you get more tired though if they're not energized and they're not as into it and you're having to drive it and you're having to give them energy at that point? Do you get more tired having to do that? I just, you know, I love what I do so much that it's just like, hey, if I got to go another 10% here and smile wider and sweat more, I'm going to do it, you know, and I miss it so much, man. I haven't, we haven't been, we haven't played since like March 13th. So I'm hoping that things will change. And I think that people are ravenous for, for entertainment. I think hopefully we're going to experience something. Now with your virtual speeches, do you enjoy those as much or do you love the visceralness of seeing that person in the front row? I do enjoy the virtual. I have enjoyed it, but I also do miss the in-person events. I actually did one yesterday in Florida. Yeah. A group of realtors got together, nice socially distanced event, but they were in the audience. I'm looking at people. You know, I said to them, I said, hey, would you mind just putting out your iPads and, and turn on Zoom so I can just look at your faces through the iPads? And I said, that would make me feel more comfortable because I've been doing so many virtual events. And now yeah. for the first time I was in real life with people and I really enjoyed it. It was nice to actually see people interact. And so I do love the in-person, but the virtuals have been great too, because you can reach more people in a quicker amount of time. You're not having to travel as much. Yeah. And I've had a lot of people say, you know, because you're right there and they're looking right at you. If you're a good communicator, you can really connect with people and yeah. get a nice response. Yesterday, I worked uh, with a school district recently, spoke to all the teachers and they said, somehow John was able to like literally come through the screen, right through the screen with his positive energy. And, and I was able to feel connected to him by the way he presented. Love and I it. think that's what I do enjoy it because I'm still able to connect with people doing this. And so, so however I have to, I'll do it. And that right. was my motto in March when COVID hit. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'll still do this mission and encourage and inspire as many people as possible, one person at a time. I don't know what the future holds. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but I'm here to help people and I'm going to live this mission. And that became my focus. And I did over 280 Zooms, podcasts, and virtual keynotes since March. And at the end of the year, I thought, you know what? All right, I accomplished my mission. Nice. Yeah, it was a, it was a perfect time to do podcasts. I felt like I was doing, I was on someone's podcast like, two times a day, all year, last oh, yeah. year. It was crazy, great. right? I mean, didn't you feel busier than ever this year? Yeah, really. I mean, totally. And there is something about that little green light on your Macintosh computer and you pour your your heart, your soul, your essence, your energy into that thing. It does work. It really does. It's very direct. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to experience it. a John Gordon event in person or through the camera eye one day, man. But uh, very inspiring, man. You've inspired me. I want to maybe write some fiction. <laughs> I think you should. I think you should. I think it'd be powerful. I know you got one in you, no doubt. For sure, man. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Hey, thanks, Rich. I appreciate you and, and the great work that you do. Hey, thank you so much. Uh, folks, check out johngordon.com and go on to Amazon and buy all 23 of his books. He worked very hard on them and he, he's got a ton of great life impacting messages. For those folks out there that are enjoying the show, thank you. I got an email address for you, the Rich Redmond Show at gmail.com. Be sure to subscribe, share, rate, and review. Keep coming back for the good stuff and we'll see you next time. Thanks, John. Hey, thanks, Rich. Appreciate it. This has been The Rich Redman Show. Subscribe, rate, and follow along at richredman.com.